Hi, this is Chris Peters for the Hampton History Museum, and today we're going to take a few minutes to talk about the trade networks that existed across North America before the arrival of the English. Now, the items that you see on the table here are good examples of the uh, tools, food, and decorative ware that the Powhatan and Kikatean Indians would have been using before the English got to Virginia. Now, the trade networks that existed across all of North America were powered mostly by regional goods. You have to have something of value to people in another part of the continent if you want to carry out business. In Tidewater, Virginia, you have plenty of access to wood for making tools and weapons. You have lots of bone. And you've got stuff like seashells that can be used. One thing that you don't have is stone. You look around Tidewater, Virginia today, you're not going to find a whole lot of stone. So if you want to have green stone and blue stone for making axe heads, like the kind you see here, or chert, flint, or obsidian for making uh, knife and arrow points, you're going to have to trade the items that you have to get them. So here in Tidewater, Virginia, that's probably going to be seafood and seafood products. Oyster shells are used as tools. They are also broken down and used for making beads like the kind you see on this necklace. Uh, the most important part is the blue and purple section of the oyster shells. They would break that out and grind it down to make purple beads like the kind that you can see along this necklace on the table. And in the area that's now New England, this would have been called wampum. So, shells and shell products along with food. Uh, you're not going to see the people of the Shenandoah Valley or the Piedmont region eating a whole lot of fresh seafood. They just don't have access to live crabs or fish, but the Powhatan Indians are processing that food and smoking it to preserve it through the winter. So now smoked oysters and smoked fish can be sent inland and used to trade for these items. Uh, another good example of the expanse of the trade networks across North America are the food items that are being traded. On the table here we have squash seeds, corn, and beans. All three of these plants were grown in a wide variety of, of species here in Virginia, but none of them are native to this area. All three of these plants actually come from the southwest. So they had to travel all the way from Mexico and the Southwest deserts to get to Virginia. And they would have traveled along footpaths that crisscrossed North America. Another good example of a trade item coming from another part of the continent is going to be this square on the table. This is actually a piece of copper, a copper plate, which would be called by the English a gorget or gorget. And we see examples of these in the drawings of John White. So we know that the Powhatan Indians and uh, the people, the Algonquin speaking people of North Carolina wore them. The English are also going to start bringing in lots of copper because of how valued it was by the Powhatan Indians. So copper coming from the upper Midwest, like Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan area. Uh, stone coming from the Appalachian Mountains and further inland, and then seafood and other food items that are being traded back and forth. These are good examples of the things that would have been traded by the Powhatan Indians, the Kikatan Indians, and other tribes of Native Americans across the continent before the arrival of the English. Now, once Europeans got to North America, this is going to disrupt these trade, uh, these trade routes pretty significantly. And one of the biggest changes will be the arrival of English iron tools. Iron axes, knives, hatchets, and other iron tools are going to be highly valued by the Powhatan Indians because they are fairly inexpensive compared to trading to get raw stone from the Appalachian Mountains they might get a much better deal trading food with the English who have brought tools like this literally by the barrel full to Virginia. So the English are more ready to hand these out than the tribes inland are to trade stone. So iron tools are going to quickly replace 
the stone examples that have been used by the Powhatan Indians for millennia. Copper from the upper Midwest has to walk all the way across half of North America. The, none of the tribes of, uh, of Native Americans across the continent had any animals of burden. Everything had to be carried by people. So for a piece of copper to come from uh, the upper Midwest all the way to Tidewater, Virginia is a pretty long distance. The English are going to start bringing in, again, barrels full of copper and trading that at very good rates from the Powhatan perspective uh, in exchange for food items. And this is usually how the English and the Powhatan interacted. The Powhatan Indians had plenty of food that the English were interested in trading for, at least at times. And so the English are giving away their manufactured goods in exchange for food. Well, that also means that the English are trading some food items to the Powhatan Indians, and these are no longer going to be valuable as trade items with other tribes. Seafood in the Tidewater region is also available to the English as well as the Powhatan Indians, so this isn't going to be as valuable with the English. You could still trade it to the interior, but the English are going to bring in glass beads made in Italy. Again, by the barrel full, they're bringing in these beads. You no longer need to have handmade beads that come from the oyster shells, so instead of trading the oyster shells, they'll be trading those beads that they're getting from the English to the interior. Now the English are still interested in the food, so that's going to remain a trade item for the Powhatan Indians here in Virginia, both seafood and uh, plant food. So corn, beans, squash, pumpkins, all kinds of food items that the Powhatan Indians are growing can be used as trade items with the English. Another thing that's going to get replaced by European trade, and this one doesn't really impact the inter-tribal trade, is going to be leather. Uh, everybody across North America had access to deer hides for making clothing and animal furs of various sorts. They were probably traded a little bit, but this is not something that moved around extensively the way some of the other products did. And so the Powhatan Indians are making all of their clothing out of animal furs and deer hide when the English arrived here. But it's pretty labor intensive to harvest the leather or harvest the skin from the deer, uh, tan it to turn it into leather, stitch it together to form clothing, when instead you could be getting shirts made out of English linen. So now instead of having to make the garment, you can just trade food to get linen shirts from the English, or wool garments, coats, cloaks, pants, uh, items that you've never had access to before. And so very quickly, the English become pretty much the exclusive trading partners of the Powhatan Indians. And then as the English conquer Powhatan territory, those trade networks are going to get disrupted even further. So what started as a network of trade routes across North America is going to get isolated to trade between the English and the Powhatan Indians, and then the English will come to dominate the region, and you see the complete uh, replacement of native items with European manufactured goods. So that's what happened to the trade networks in North America uh, before and after the arrival of Europeans. This has been Chris Peters for the Hampton History Museum, and thanks for joining me.